Good afternoon. I uh, wanted to share a few thoughts this afternoon on uh, just meditating on the Psalms. Our Psalm for Lent 5 was Psalm 130. And it is a wonderful Psalm for us to take and pray, especially now. And maybe not even the whole Psalm, just uh, a little part. I like to take Scripture um, and just take a little phrase and meditate on it and pray through it. Sometimes just to pause and let that let those words soak into me and and listen and try to pray through them and sometimes I take a phrase and read the newspaper and, and pray through the newspaper in relation to the uh, whatever yeah, the psalm is about. So today I took uh, the, just the first two verses of Psalm 130. Uh, the psalm begins, "Out of the depths I cry to you." O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. O Lord, please be attentive to the voice of my pleas. So the psalmist is crying out to God, and twice we have sort of a repetition of uh, this image of God listening. So there's even hope in these first two verses. Um, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my pleas for mercy. So uh, I, I take just that little phrase, and honestly, even as I'm praying it, uh, maybe one part of the phrase sticks in my mind more than others. I might just start out, Oh Lord, uh, out of the depths I cry to you. That becomes sort of a breath prayer. Uh, today I actually walked at the park and uh, just sort of soaked in that prayer and tried to listen in that prayer and uh, also to Pray that prayer for our world. Um, the prayer is obviously a prayer of anguish and beginning in a, in a place of desperation. The, the word depths there specifically has to do with, uh, or, or sort of has an implication of water. The, the, the depths of uh, deep waters and, and, and within that there's an image of Sheol. That uh, I've descended into the place of the dead. So from the place of, of absolute hopelessness cry out to the Lord. And so as I meditate just on that, and I pray out of the depths, I cry to you, Lord. And that notion of hopelessness is so uh, it's so real for many people in our world, not simply with this virus, although this virus situation heightens it. But if we could just see how many people in our world feel hopeless every day, uh, feel hopeless because of uh, the situations in their family, situations in culture, the situations in the world around them. Um, we're asking God to let us pray for them uh, in this prayer, but uh, also specifically uh, in, in our current situation with the virus, the doctors and the healthcare workers, the nurses, uh, the emergency workers, all those who are involved, who are putting their lives on the line and the weariness they feel and in the depths of their own weariness, we are crying out to God to listen and to hear the groaning and the, the exhaustion and maybe the fear. Uh, and, and now you also have the people who are uh, facing death. They're, they might feel as though they're at death's door or they're struggling or they're just fearful. They're people that are trapped and isolated in their homes. Think of the people who have uh, uh, either no family or no ability to connect with their family, who feel cut off, who are in a place of desperation. And so I take that prayer, I take it out of the depths. I cry to you, O Lord, and I'm wanting to lift up and, and just somehow pray for our world through the Psalms, through the voice of the psalmist. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Hear my voice. Hear. Uh, when, I, when I was praying that this morning, O Lord, hear my voice, I, I was thinking of the... Uh, Several times in Israel's history when they're groaning, crying out, and, and not specifically even to the Lord, they're just groaning, and the Lord hears their groanings. The slaves in Egypt are groaning, and they're not specifically praying. Um, they are groaning under the weight, and the Lord hears their groans, and he attends to them. He sends a deliverer. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is already faithful, and he already sustains us and protects us, and yet... He is very attentive to his people and to the 
cries of his people. And, and he has invited us to sort of join in with him uh, in, in this prayer for the world. And, and I might point out as I'm meditating on that, I'm realizing that actually as I pray, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. I'm, I'm joining my uh, voice in one sense with the very cry of my Savior, Jesus Christ, who is who is cry, who cried out for the nations, for the people from the cross uh, as he go, descends into the grave. And so this psalm becomes a cry. I can hear the voice of the Lord crying out for mercy for the nations, crying out for mercy, pouring out his life for mercy. And then this last part, just this hopefulness that God is attentive. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. And then by the time we get to the end of Psalm 130, uh, we're told to hope. Put your hope in the Lord. Be, let, watch for the Lord more than the watchman waits for the morning because the Lord is faithful. And so instead of worrying and fretting over all that goes on in our world or in our lives, the prayer now becomes a place of calm, a place of peace where I'm letting go and I'm entrusting once again, even if I have to do it every hour, uh, my own cares and the cares of this world to the goodness of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and may he give you peace. Amen.